Hello everyone from the state of Georgia. Hopefully my face is not coming in too close. I'm sorry, there's not much I can do about the monstrosity God has given me. But here we go. And just to say something positive about Georgia for a moment, Georgia, the only state in the Union where you can take a shower one minute, step out, and feel as if you still need to take another shower because you've already sweated enough to make yourself as dirty as a country hog. I'm not sure any Georgian would say that, but this one did. So the school update is as follows. Paulding County School District, the district that has North Paulding High School in it, where the infamous hallway photo was taken by Hannah Waters, um, has decided to do virtual learning for both Monday and Tuesday after nine students tested positive for the coronavirus. They have yet to make an announcement as to whether school will continue in person, online, or a hybrid of the two modalities. Now, in my opinion, which is only that of a lonely a lowly educator who, if he were working at a school at the moment, would probably feel somewhat uh, anxious about returning to in-person classes because obviously with cerebral palsy, I have a pre-existing condition, the cerebral palsy. So, I would hope that Paulding County Schools and other districts who have had problems with coronavirus. Barrow has al already decided to do virtual learning. Uh, and there is Cherokee County Schools, which across its 9 through 12 educational system has had up to 250 cases of coronavirus positive tests which is an absolutely astronomical number in terms of how infectious the virus could be to those who, to those to whom they return home, to other family members, other students, other members of the community. Um, so I would hope that most districts if they do not decide to go fully virtual, um, would decide to at least undertake a hybrid of the two, thus reducing the amount of students within not just the classroom, but the school itself, thus making it more difficult for the virus to be transmitted. Because above all, our concern the concern of adults, children, teachers, administrators, superintendents should be ultimately the safety and health of our students. If we are putting them at risk by having them go to school, school has no value. School should not be a place of risk now, with things such as active shooters and shooter drills and possible um, interruptions to the school day, there's always a risk. But if we know the risk exists and we know students and teachers are susceptible to suffering from that risk more likely than any other, why would we put them in danger? We shouldn't. We wouldn't. In any district, I say this again, any district needs to revise its plan for reopening if that plan does not include a reduction of the number of students and staff and teachers in a school building on a given day. You are not doing enough if your plan does not include that. Because humans are 
the way that this virus best transmits itself. And the less we interact, the, the better in terms of how much the disease takes hold. And I understand that there are social and emotional factors to be taken from isolation and removal from one social group, but until we find a safe vaccine, a safe way of controlling this virus, why put ourselves at risk? Care for each other by staying apart, which sounds antithetical and in some ways it is, but if it's the one way we can show we care about one another, why would we not do it? Let's work together and do it. And the most, I don't want to end this on a not positive note, but having heard today that Hannah Waters is receiving threats from her high school classmates of being beaten up and coming to her house and beating up anyone who's named Hannah or that she will have a rough day at school on Monday morning or whenever she returns, that is despicable. Despicable. And whoever makes or made those threats to any student, to any parent, to any administrator, to any superintendent, to anyone, needs to face the full punishment of the law. That is unacceptable. Whether or not you agree with Hannah's stance or not, it gives you no right to wish her bodily harm, to plan to harm her, or to plan to harm anyone else. And if you have any business in this conversation, you will at least be civil, and you will treat people like human beings. If you don't want to follow the procedures, we can have a difference of opinion. But we don't have a difference of opinion on violence towards others. And we never will. And that includes students and teachers and administrators and people in general. Because you know what? We are all that we've got. So either we work together and disagree as civilly as we can, or you step out of the conversation because you don't belong in it. Just the educational update for this this Monday, August something, I've forgotten the date, 2020. The year where everything happened. Bye-bye.